everyone, and welcome to Born Under Punches, the show where I try to get sincere answers out of Kelly, and he continues to try and force a bit um, so that we have a total lapse of communication. Um, so I guess let's get right off started with that. Kelly, why don't you come out here and uh, not answer any of the questions I ask you? Oh, hi there, Nicole. Hi. I guess um, I, uh, I really, I feel like we've done this about a dozen times and I s- still think I fail to introduce myself every time I come on screen. So I'm Nicole. Um, there's no rule that says you have to. I suppose, yeah. I guess, what are social conventions? They're just, they're just made up. Yeah, but we're all about breaking conventions here. Sorry, mm-hmm. uh, speaking of conventions, you wanted me to ignore your questions. Does that include that question you just asked of why don't you come out? and ignore my questions? Like, I feel like that gets into a, a recursive problem. I can, yeah, I can see how that would be confusing, but you've already addressed it. So uh, I guess, yeah, we can just move forward from there. Okay, well, what did you want to move forward with? I'm, I'm all ears, I'm Mr. Hands Off the Wheel, as you know. Perfect, yeah, of course. Um, Kelly, notoriously Hands Off the Wheel. Um, do you, you use Reddit at all? Uh, You know, I did just, uh, like, today, I guess, Um, and if we're getting huge into Nerd Corner, uh, it was very bizarre to do because uh, I I realized why I'd stopped using it uh, after getting used to just kind of, you know, hanging around on our extremely fun Discord, which will be in the YouTube description that uh, everyone can join. Uh, I just wanted to, like, put a little picture in the comment when I was talking to someone, and you just can't. Like, you have to go elsewhere to put a picture Mm. up then go back to reddit and link it is that what you're trying to set me up for was me ranting about uh tech platforms no i mean that wasn't what i was setting you up for but i appreciate your candid answer and uh actually yeah i was expecting you to try and turn that into a bit but yes i can see how that would be frustrating well i wouldn't want to force a bit nicole (laughs) yeah i know that's not you at all um so I guess uh, my follow-up question is, do you have any like subreddits that you frequent or like ones that you like love? <clears throat> ones. So wait, do you mean like- subreddits that I frequent because uh, because I unironically like what's in them or subreddits that I frequent because I like to torture myself with the horrendous cursed <laughs> stuff that is in them? I mean, I kind of want to hear both, but yeah, I was specifically asking about subreddits. Like, is there like a subreddit that just fucking tickles the innermost part of you that's like, this is exactly what I need today. Uh, well, I hear... It's who so, you are as a person. I think this is this is what I've really been wanting to get into, is how do you say the names of subreddits out loud? Like, do you s- pronounce the R? Mm. Do you say the slashes? So you, you're saying, because it's, what is it? R slash subreddit slash? Is that yeah, how? well, when you type them, you have to type the slash, and then the R, and then the slash for it to make a link. Oh. That's a lot of slashes to say out loud. Of course so you I are. Do, do I say that, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, like, uh, you know, slash R slash the underscore Donald, or do I say I am a fan of, like, R the Donald? It's just... I always feel weird about it. And then I remember it's best not to discuss Reddit in real life because everyone will just think you're a huge sweaty nerd. That's uh, all valid points. Um, Should I not have brought it up then? Uh, No, we're powering through it uh, because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to stonewall you, but I just, I need to know what the social norms are so I don't embarrass myself. I I ignore all of the R and the slash because I don't understand it because I'm 30 now. Um, I just say the name or the the words in between. So okay. I don't know what kids are do- cool kids are doing these days, but I, I ignore the R. It makes okay. it more accessible. I don't know. Uh, okay, so you want my sincere answer and my uh, self-flagellation answer? Yes, absolutely. Um, I feel like my sincere answer is um, I've been going to the Alberta one a lot recently whenever I just like 
I, I've been kind of out of the loop, but then someone says something like, hey, did you hear what happened with insert incredibly awful thing here? Uh, and then I just have to go, oh, yeah, of course. And then I quietly sneak off to uh, the Alberta subreddit to find out, like, you know, what the latest news is. It's it's basically, yeah, my extremely janky news source. Fair. And then you follow the Donald as a self-flagellation thing or? Well, you know, they uh, they were, you know, of course, censored in silence. So the kind of thing I, what do I visit ironically? Um there's a wonderful one. Have we talked about the like the retcon subreddit? No. What is this? So that's uh, have you heard of the Mandela effect? Yes. Yeah, and so that's when something that you swear uh, you kind of came up with, like all of a sudden it has changed, and what everyone seems to say has you know the the classic one is honestly the Berenstein Bears one. That's one that messed everyone else up. Uh, where they're saying, like, no, it was spelled like Stein or Steen, S-T-E-I-N, but on the book, it's clearly A-I-N. And, you know, normally that's would be interpreted as, like, wow, isn't human memory sure fallible? Isn't it crazy how strongly you can believe something that's not true? Um, but the retcon subreddit is where people go when they've been banned from uh mandela effect for insisting that reality has changed oh oh and that's one of the rules of this perfect. community is that you have to agree that reality has changed you cannot disagree with people oh yeah you get a lot of normal healthy outcomes that sounds like a nightmare and i definitely something that i'm going to be looking up later speaking of normal and healthy um was that a was that a segue to introduce our guest? Uh, yeah, and I should be clear: this is not me having hands on the wheel. This is that Josh chose to tell only me that we should introduce our guest. Fair. So um, this is Josh's hands on the wheel. I'm just a puppet. He's kind of got his hand up my butt and is manipulating my <laughs> jaws and tongue from the inside. Oh, that's a visual I did not need. Um, for those of you watching who tune in regularly, um, which is no one. Um, <laughs> Paige is generally our producer, um, but we have, a, she is off tonight, so we have a medium deucer, and Josh seems to be doing a wonderful job of reining Kelly in. Um, so on that note, let's bring in our guest, um, Brian Breezy. Mm -hmm. um, Breezy is a rock and roll musician, a folk singer, the former mayor, you may know him as a um, former mayoral candidate for Edmonton, and he is an advocate for the Democratic Media Report. How's it going, Breezy? It's great, thanks, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, spend any time on subreddit or on Reddit or like any like forums like that? Do you have any forums that you frequent where you get? Involved. You know, I've never gone on Reddit yet. Mm. I I um, I went on Facebook for about seven years, and uh, then I quit. I can did about three years ago. I just continued my uh, my account, and uh, I have a a Twitter account that I've made maybe six or seven years ago, and I made two posts on it. And now all I do is observe the emails they send me every day. Oh. I track them. I, I track what they're feeding to me. Mm -hmm. and uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't really use uh, very, very much, uh, uh, very many of the platforms. I mean, like I have to use, I do, I do search things on the internet. So I, I use DuckDuckGo most of the time, but sometimes it's not very effective. So I use Google mm -hmm. uh, reluctantly. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That must um, must have been hard for you during your campaign then to try and campaign um, without with uh, using limited um, platforms on online. Did you find that to be difficult, or did you find it hard to reach people? Uh, well, I only reached uh, like thirteen hundred and forty four uh, that voted for me, so. <laughs> It, you know, it, it, it wasn't that successful. You know, I was the third 
lowest showing of all the, the 12 candidates. But uh, yeah, it was difficult. It was a challenge. And I, um, I freaked out just about two weeks before the, before the election, I thought, because I had had a plan. My plan was that, um, and, and, and I'd been working on my plan, was to perform electric guitar really loud at busy intersections every day, except mm -hmm. when it was raining. And wearing my the sparkly jacket and my loud electric guitar, and the people by the election time would uh, recognize that that's who I was—the guy that was running for mayor. Uh, but it wasn't working. Like they called the federal election in the middle of the civic election, and it, it was eating up all the airtime. Uh, mm -hmm. There, there was nothing discussed in any of the forums. Nobody went to them, and uh, so uh, my plan of of being able to like reach out to my community by being out in front of all the drivers because Edmonton is a driver's city. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it didn't really work. So at the last two weeks, I could see it wasn't working. And uh, I I hired two people to um, do uh, uh, Facebook posts for me. And so Twitter posts and uh, Instagram posts. And mm -hmm. I don't know even if that helped, but it was sort of fun. Like I did my research, uh, and uh, they said uh, that the, the the couple of guys that ran Boris Johnson's um, successful campaign to be prime minister of Britain was two young guys from Australia, like about your ages. I think they were in their late twenties, and uh, they uh, they had a, a a YouTube video talk, talking about their techniques, and I studied that, and they said that. Uh, video is king. Like this, is what we're doing now. Video is is king on 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 the social media, and uh, they said that they had to do like ten posts an hour. Uh, mm. is what they did. Like, and and they said it didn't matter uh, if they were really uh, professional. It just mattered that they were that you were really quick reacting to what was happening in the news, and that uh, uh, you uh, like humor was good, sarcasm was good, things like that. So. Mm -hmm. I asked my people that were, were doing that job for me to take that into uh, account. And then they they did do 10 posts a day for 10 days. But I, I, I it was just sort of like a like a freak out at the end. I thought, oh, my, my plan did not work because of this and this. So I'm going to try this. But it, it didn't it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um... I guess that's. I was. I've watched a couple of interviews on you uh, that you've done, and um, some of the like a lot of the. I, I really agree with a lot of the <clears throat> things that you were saying, and the like. You, I, it sounds like you're really committed to helping to end homelessness and um, <clears throat> working on making communities more, I guess, accessible and organized. And I thought those were really uh, great ideas. Um, and I was wondering, like, did you get a lot of like, did you get a lot of feedback from people that you talked to that were like the positive feedback about those things, or did you find that people are, um, like, were like calloused or had like, um, I don't know, uh, differing opinions? Well, uh, I had a lot of positive feedback from the people that I did contact. Like, I tried to mm -hmm. to phone thirty people a day just through my own personal contacts and that was my goal to talk to 30 people a day uh, for eight yeah. months and that was very interesting because it's like doing a survey you know like I, I didn't formally write down all the responses to everything but you get a general idea of how what people are thinking and how they're feeling so so I like that and uh uh you know, I lost, what was the, what was your question again? I got distracted there. Oh, no worries. I was just wondering, um, like, what, what kind of feedback you got from people about your ideas? Because I, I think that they're, like, wonderful ideas. Um, the things like the, the increasing taxes and the, um, the cash incentive for voting and stuff, I think some people might see them as, like, extreme or, like, out there. But, like, did you get any positive feedback about those or did you have any? Oh, yeah. That, that, I got both. Uh, you know, I had, I had people... Uh, I had I had sort of like a wide range of of responses to to my platform, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean like it, it it was really interesting to see how like my email was so busy it was like eight months of like twelve hour days of 
of answering all the email. It's like so many people send you surveys and Google forms and everything, or all these uh, lobby organizations want you to answer all their questions. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of like annoying because like a lot of the answers were right on my web page, but they want me to take time out to answer their specific questionnaire instead of doing their own research. But that's the way it was. It was, it was an education to see uh, all the organizations that were thinking it was important to ask all these questions of candidates. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it's, uh, um, that was kind of one of the main things I was interested in as far as um, what your process was in, in the, in the course of running for mayor. Uh, because like, I, I think like, would you, think it's fair to say like you're you're certainly an idealist right right and uh i, I think that's an interesting question is um balancing the idea your like idealism and realism uh you, you said you got how many how many votes total 1344 so did you have an idea like going into it of how well you expected to do how well you like ambitiously wanted to do like what was your kind of threshold were you in it to win it in it to just get like your voice in there or what i was in it to win it uh but i was quite uh, realistic to think that, that that was a really a long shot but i was going to try for it anyway right and uh, uh but i did expect to get about 10 times more votes than i did uh like uh at, and i think that uh the reason that my my uh the, the the account that I got was was way below my expectations was because of the uh, the way the race went like there was very little discussion in the community uh, except for Mike Nickel is bad so it was was pretty well the discussion and that was the that was not a very deep discussion which frustrated me like I wanted to talk about uh, all the issues and 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 get people talking about the issues and get people engaged but everybody was like uh over covid worried and uh the federal election uh and so it you know i, I was really disappointed like i i thought that i could uh, somehow get through to the people that don't usually vote and get them to vote i mean if i could have done that that they're the majority mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I, and I think that's uh, a, like a recurring issue and it's it's hard to see how that's going to get better is people, we've got it, we've basically got a system set up where it's like you have essentially two people that are running against each other because people don't want the other guy to get in. And so people are scared to give their votes to people that they might align with more politically because, well, what if this person that is you know, on the other side, it gets in, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and to be fully honest, like that's how I voted because when I look at that list of candidates, I go, um, you know, I look, I look at candidates and I see a platform like yours that says, hey, let's stop burning everything. And I think, hmm, this is probably the most like salient point really any of us should be talking about is the fact that we're in an unfolding climate emergency, but that's, not in the end what gets talked about so the idealist in me as a voter thought well i mean this is who this is somebody i would love to vote for um but in all honesty like the realist in me looked at it went well how concerned am i about uh mike nickel winning and you know do i want to vote strategically and i i did vote for amarajit so he and i do i do like stand by that vote i think he is uh, a great candidate but it always kind of pains me and i brought this up with uh harun ali one of our uh, prior guests who was a uh, i guess i would say like a long shot uh counselor in my ward was it's a problem with first past the post voting in itself you know if we if we had something like a ranked choice vote i would immediately go out and put my idealist vote you know right at the top of the ballot and then move downward through my people that I think are a little more um, my realist votes and then I can rank the people I actively dislike at the bottom and it's it's always dismaying that you can't do that and I think 
it's it's hard to imagine um genuine long shot candidates winning with the system we have in place it's just so stacked against someone that comes in uh as an outsider if that makes sense that makes a lot of sense yeah mm -hmm. here's a statistic for you uh Amarjeet uh, raised uh, a little over three quarters of a million dollars and he spent uh, about $4.70 per vote. And uh, I I spent uh, almost $3,000 worth of my own money and I spent $1.70 per vote. So I spent much less per vote than he did. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, and uh, I don't know if that means anything, but uh, to me, it's an interesting statistic. I think it's a very interesting statistic. And I think it, I don't know, it definitely goes to show something. And I think that is, I mean, I think that's something to be proud of. Uh, as uh, one of our commenters pointed out, uh, they said, you know, 1344 might not be a lot in terms of winning, but it's still uh, a lot of people who trust you enough to vote for you. And I think that is like all the more meaningful in a in a first past the post system where knowingly voting for any long shot candidate is in a way saying I'm voting to send a message not because I likely think this person is going to win so that's you know that's a large number of people that went like I want to make a point of voting for this person mm -hmm. so I guess my 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 follow-up question is having had that experience and having kind of seen some of the reality of it um where does your your quest as you put it take you next if if that was if that didn't get you where you wanted to be um what do you learn from that and what do you do next with your energy with your activism well that's totally totally clear for me right now is that um i'm going to i'm going to be pushing uh, for uh, uh uh, what I call it, the digital uh, public library proposal, which is the idea of creating a new public service in Canada, uh, uh, digital communication service, uh, where where uh, people can access all content, uh, advertising free, and without being surveilled, and a public service, so that we can have like a public search engine, public social media, uh, public content access library like youtube is just a, a, a big library of videos and uh and not but not only do i want the, this service to um, give everybody uh, this free access uninterrupted free access but uh, also i wanted to automatically pay the uh, people who own the copyright to whatever is being produced and it's just a job for a robot a robot can measure when something's been streamed and and it, it, you don't have to surveil and say who's who's streaming it doesn't have that doesn't have to that doesn't have to be uh disclosed but the other thing that that i propose about about this kind of a, a, a way of uh, financing production of content is that the user should have like even though it's it, they trigger an automatic payment they should have like a manual option to reverse that payment and claw it back to the library uh, if they for any reason they think the content they're accessing is inappropriate or uh you know uh you know just unworthy uh, uh then they have the power just on their own content that they've triggered to be paid to pull that back so this is like a powerful um uh, kind of a way dis disincentive to those who would want to try to uh, profit from deception uh, you know like if you got click baited you can reverse it you, uh, so, and I think like it's like it's a really powerful way of a democratic way of, of vetting content like in, in some ways like it doesn't really matter uh, uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter if something it is being said is wrong or bad if it isn't getting amplified and reproduced uh, by somebody who wants to pay for that being amplified. 
-hmm. You know, like if you just have a, a, a lie sitting alone in the, in the library and nobody's looking at it, who cares? Yeah, and that's, I think, um, I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts about the problems with social media and things like Facebook and stuff, and they get you get more engagement from people if they're pissed off or sad or outraged. And so a lot of the algorithms reinforce those feelings. So you're saying you're 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 saying that with you you're you would like to see something to counteract that basically. And it sounds like you want it to be advertisement free and free to the public. So where would you are you would you suggest that that's like um that it's like a government paid like a government funded service or Oh, for sure, yeah. Just mm -hmm. like Medicare or the highways or the courts or it's a public service. But the thing is that the, the government wouldn't really be in control of the flow of the funds. The mm -hmm. government would collect the funds, uh, but it would be individual people that were, were triggering the payments or, or banishing payments, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, so... Uh, I, I, I like that kind of a thing because when you put like a, a government and a bu bureaucracy in charge of saying, oh, this piece of content's worth more than another and this one's bad, you can't look at it, and this one's good, you should look at it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a big mess, a big, a huge, long, a mess, messy thing to try to, to, uh, to be fair in that kind of a system. But when you allow every individual to make the choice for themselves, then it's kind of simple in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a yeah, that's an interesting idea and a con interesting concept. That's um something that I've been thinking about a lot is how do we counteract these like giant corporations that are have basically made it their job to profit off of um outrage and misinformation and um like just messing with people. Um and that's yeah, I think that's that's a, a cool interesting out of the box way to think about it is you know, maybe we just have that service for free. Like maybe that's that's something that we can, like as a society, if we can agree that this is something that everyone needs and wants, that, but we don't wanna, yeah, sacrifice our privacy or our, you know, um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that's yeah. a very cool idea. And you know what, what a lot of people don't know, and I didn't really know this till, till last month, but I, I was reading about it is that the, re the reason that, that all these uh, commercial platforms can be in business uh, it, a, a, as a content access service is that in 1996, the, uh, the Americans passed uh, this uh, uh, Communications Decency Act. Mm. And it gave, it gave protection to internet platforms. They called them interactive uh, digital uh, uh, computer services, uh, they, it gave them uh, permission to reproduce uh, other people's content, but not have to be liable for it. Uh, so with with that giant loophole, it's called the safe harbor laws, uh, they can make a lot of money by by uh, like pushing harm and pushing deception. Mm -hmm. Because the guys that want the, the guys that want to want to deceive and push harm uh, uh, can can make money from it. And so they can make money from it. So it's it's a very like uh, uh, like sort of sick, like a, a pathology. What they call it, pathology is the big word. It was just a sick system, if you ask me. A system where where, where you make profits by giving people the opportunity to harm others. Like yuck. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And and so to me, the path to having like a new public service is to first of all repeal those laws and say. Hey, this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, and, and as soon as you repeal those laws, I'm sorry, but like Google and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, all those guys would just have to shut down because they'd face so much litigation. Uh, they would just have to shut down. But the problem is we need those services. We want that. We want to be able to access content. We want to be able to search the internet. So we're going to, if, if we repeal those laws, we have to step in with a new public service to provide those like the social media the search and and that library function for like and, and i i think it, it should go for the whole gamut like we should be able to access live entertainment 
live sporting events, everything th through a public service. Mm -hmm. I'm not an extremist, you know, but I'm a zealot. But, you know, I thought about this for a long time and it just does not make sense to have two these two very different industries married. Like one industry is an advertising industry and the other is a content access industry. They both serve different markets. The, the advertising industry serves the, the uh, uh, people who want to advertise and the content access industry serves people who want to be entertained and informed. So mm -hmm. they, and they, they like, they're married together and we're, we're, we're sort of brainwashed into accepting this based on the premise that this is saving us money. Like it's cheap, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's true. There's no evidence to show that there's no study that says, Hey, oh, this really actually is saving you money to be, to be uh, using advertising funded media. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is a, that I, I would say again, like, I mean, I'm, I'm an extremist too. So like from a idealist perspective, I fully agree with you. It kind of leaves me with the same question that, you know, this is something that I'm always thinking of is when I look at my ideals, like, well, how can I put this into um, practice in a like practical, realistic way? So like, I guess my question is like, um, have you considered like what your approach to this is practically like, what is step one? Are there people you've spoken to who um, have ideas about like how you, how you even sell this to people? Uh, Cause I, I would say for one thing, um, one of the realities of trying to convince the public of anything is there's a real knee jerk reaction to the idea that like something will cost them money in like a, uh, a visible way you say, well, we want to use taxes to fund this, that that gets more of a negative reaction out of people, despite, you know, the, the ways that they, they pay for everything else in some other way. Right. Like the fact that everything on YouTube is free, you're, is being paid for by the fact that you're buying something that's being advertised there. So yeah, that's my question is like, right, well, okay, well here, here's my answer is that, um, I think, I think like, like, like part, part of what I have to do, <coughs> excuse me, is explain, uh, how media economics works. Like wh where, d where does that money come from that the Google and Facebook are making like record profits and, and where, where does that money come from? And, uh, like there's, there is no, no real in-depth study, but what I'm saying just as a, an ordinary person is that it, it doesn't quite makes doesn't make quite sense if they're making all that money where is it coming from and and you 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 look down the the, the money supply chain and and what really is happening is that the um, advertising creates what they call false demand and that means it makes people want things that they wouldn't normally be wanting without seeing the advertising mm -hmm. and like it's basic economic theory that what when demand goes up prices go up so here we live in it we live in a life where we're totally uh per persistently exposed to advertising when we're trying to get entertained or informed so so we're constantly getting wanting thing things so every, maybe not you in particular but the whole society together that the demand goes up and up and up and prices go up and up and up. So no matter what you go to buy, whether you've seen the ad or not, other people have the prices up. So you you pay more for your products and services than what they're really worth. And and the advertisers and and, and the, the firms that are doing the ad, advertising get to to make extra profits for, without giving you anything extra. Mm -hmm. you have a bunch of hype. Mm -hmm. and, and so. Uh, if people reckon like it's not that easy to see that that's it's it's easy just to turn on your computer click facebook or click google that's easy but to, to but to see how this whole process is working there has to be there has to be an explanation why do they have billions of dollars of profits where is it coming from it's got to be coming from somewhere they're not really making anything they're using everybody else's content that somebody else has made like you, you make your posts that you put on there you make all these stupid arguments you have with people that they keep throwing you at, at you know, the, Vox is good. No, Vox is bad. Oh, Vox is good. You're wrong. 
I know. This is the statistics. Look at this wormhole on YouTube. You know, it, it, it back and forth. But yay, hey, you're on here longer. We can serve you more ads and we can collect more dough. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's not a healthy, w healthy way to be communicating when we're in an emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also interesting to think about as well. Um, people like I know I have I've had family members that are like so susceptible to those Facebook ads. And like, it's like, I just get like calls from like people in my family that are like, Oh, yeah, I bought this thing off of it. I bought this thing online, and it hasn't come in yet. Or it's like, I got it. And it's like, you know, a miniature of what I thought it was. And I'm like, was it a Facebook ad? And they're like, Yeah. And I'm like, don't click on those. And I just like, I've been trying to drill it into my family and I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm about. <laughs> um, I just, I'm trying to figure out like what it is that makes people so susceptible. Like, what is it about our society that we feel like we need those things like that we're being served on there? Well, everyone has a weakness and, and the, 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 the platforms are designed to find it. And once they find it, that goes into your into your record. Hey, oh look at Nicole. This is how we can get her to spend her money. This is we get her to give her credit card number away. This, so you guys that worked on on this one, you guys try it too. Serve her this kind of an ad, you know, like yeah, yeah. And that's and I. It took me a while to. I, I I'm guilty as well of clicking on those ads. I don't think I I don't know that I've ever bought anything, but like even clicking on them, they're like, well, she went to our website, and then you get push notifications, and you get suddenly these companies are mess sending you messages that are like, hey, you you went to our website and you didn't check anything out. Are you sure you don't want to come back? And it's like, it's so intrusive. Yeah. I mean. I don't have a weakness, but I do think it is a good point that most people. Uh, have a weakness. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm so glad that I met you, Kelly. Ah, uh, that don't 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 compliment me. I'll I'll blush on camera. That's bad. <laughs> uh, so I do want to um, see if uh, if the if the music will work. Do you want do you want to give it a go? I, I don't want to run out of time for you to play us a song. Yeah. Sorry, that's you, Breezy. I wasn't asking yeah. Nicole to play us. Uh, oh, you want me to play a song? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we covered let's, you. Let's do a song together. Like, like uh, you guys tell me what it should be about, and we'll just make it up. Oh. Well, we, we're going to make up a song? Sure, why not? It just like a, a bit, you know, like, like um, uh, what should it be about? Like, and... Uh, See, now I'm almost wondering if, um, okay, wait, I mean, we could do a song before and after our game, because I feel like uh, having, uh, if we wrote a song about the adventures that our pet store animals go through after we play the game. Okay, that would be good, sure. Well, I'm, we're, I'm getting ahead of myself, so we do have a suggestion from the audience here. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, Spite Sprite here says the song should be about battle frogs. So uh, I think that's as good a suggestion as any. About battle frogs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, I'm just reading what's on the cards. It says battle okay, frogs. What are battle frogs? Want, what's that? What are battle frogs? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. What are battle frogs? Yeah. And we'll just wait for that answer. <laughs> I think battle frogs are whatever you want them to be. Are there are there any other details you would want for a song? Like it's about battle frogs, but like maybe do we want to ask what their motivation is or where they are? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't refine it for us, but it's good to know that there's no wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, what should I take it away then? Battle frogs? Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. The day the battle frogs came out of the swamp. <laughs> they 
they came to fight. Hate and blight. They came out of the mud. Okay, you guys, I need some more help. What did they do? Oh, God. okay. Uh, sorry, I was uh, I was attending to some uh, some business. Um, okay. I think the um, if we think of kind of the the hero's journey here, like I think that the battle frogs have to kind of uh, what what do they do first? Cross a threshold, like, or what sort of uh, specific adversity comes to the battle frogs? Mm. Well, if they're fighting hate and blight, what what kind of hate and blight are they fighting? Is it is it is this like are we, is is it too real to say that they're fighting racism and COVID? Uh, they're hating. Oh, I was going to say that they're hating. Uh, with love, they said, "Come on, love and respect everyone." They came to fight the COVID. They said, "Please be careful." Be safe. Love and respect. All right. I don't know if the suggestions on the screen are helping you, but. I wasn't lucky now. I got, I got carried away. I was thinking about all these frogs coming out of the swamp with mm. love. Well, I mean, it sounds like we're all on the same page with that. Mm. Battle frogs, eh? Yeah. yeah. I appreciate you going for that. I was uh, I was trying to think of words that would rhyme, and I was like, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I know we should have gone into, like, the frog was on the log. Hmm. Yeah, I like the in the suggestion here. We had the emerged from the bog. That was oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank that you, person, Spike. Green. That person should get a cut of the royalties. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, these are all things we can definitely work out once we get into the studio later. Yeah. So yeah, we I guess we talked about your um, advocacy and your mayoral candidacy, and yeah, so it's nice to get a little bit of the folk music side of you as well. Mm -hmm. um, did you, so you were you mentioned um, when we were talking backstage a little bit about how um, you think that as a folk singer you have a responsibility to um, call out some of the things that are going on in society and stuff. Was that um, yeah? Do you think that that's part of that is um, what spurred you into politics, or is it the other way around? Do you think? Uh, it's kind of a bit of both. Like, can you imagine? Like, I grew up like. Uh, you're Alberta people, right? Mm -hmm. well, I mean, we're technically from Saskatchewan, but we try not oh, to mind. <laughs> Actually, Saskatchewan is the ho is the home of the real socialists in, in Canada. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, my dad uh, was Peter Lougheed's finance chairman. He was the guy that phoned up all the CEOs of the oil companies and said, oh, this Arthur Gregg here, how are you doing? Yeah, well, you know, there's an election coming up. You're going to be voting for Peter, of course, aren't you going to be supporting him too, you know? So, you, you know, he should send the check to the party office, blah, blah. You know, that's what he did. He raised all the dough to buy all the signs and, and uh, brochures and uh, like that. So the, I grew up around that. And my mom was the uh, president of the Progressive Conservative Women's Association of Alberta. So I grew up seeing all that stuff. So that kind of got me a, a basic kind of clue into what was going on with politics. But then my my passion was to play uh, play uh, electric guitar. 
And so uh, I was doing that. I was growing up and learning how to play the guitar at the same time the Vietnam War was on. And my musical heroes uh, were like in the peace movement. Mm -hmm. And I could see how, or at least it appeared to me, that th that pop music really did help change minds of people and end that war in Vietnam. And I thought to myself, wow, this is what I want to do with my music. I want to, I want to use my music for uh, illuminating some, like, some important issues in our world. And like, so I always re respected like uh, those musicians that, that, that and, and artists that tried to, uh, to do that and talk about, uh, uh, you know, what's going on in our world and about peace and love. It's like, I'm a hippie, peace and love, right? Okay, still believe in it, sorry, you know, like. Don't apologize. I think those are wonderful things to advocate for and be actively um, trying to promote. I think that's great. Hmm. Um, I mean, I'm a little conflicted because I'm, I'm way into peace, but like hate love. I, I find I can never, you know, uh, pick a side of the fence there. You know, <laughs> people, people always, uh, there's always people that disagree with me on part of my platform. Mm -hmm. I'm joking. It was a dumb bit. I'm sorry. No, that's good. It's tough. <laughs> I jumped in too late with the dumb bits. We were being but, so sincere. No, that's not so dumb, Kelly. Like, like hate is a is a is a real emotion, and it's like it it overcomes us sometimes. Like I am sorry. Like I I'm kind of ashamed, but I was having hateful thoughts when when all those guys were honking their air horns. I've only lived like six blocks from the ledge, and uh, you know, like I had bad thoughts, and God, I didn't act on them. But uh, it like after eight hours of honk honk honk, you can you can hear it right in your house. Like come on, like. And especially like I'm a musician, you know, like it sounded, but it is, they're shaking your ears. Like it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of intrusive, it's, it's hard to, yeah, hard to, hard not to let the hate or the anger take over when you're, yeah, you, there's no escape from the thing that's causing you stress. Yeah. I, I guess it's in, in a way like, like those are n normal human emotions, and it's good if you, like, like if uh, if you uh, you get energy from being upset and angry, you get energy from that. But it, the thing is to use it for something positive and not keep dwelling on it till it becomes hate. Like just mm -hmm. you know, that, like it is there for a reason. Something's wrong, and then take that energy that you got from it and hopefully turn it into some kind of solution. That's the way I look. Yeah, be a conduit for that feeling and turn it into something productive. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really cool. Um, well, that's a great point. And if it yields a great point, is it truly a bad bit? That's my question. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a question for our viewers to answer. Um, but maybe we, we should, uh, speaking of doing productive things, we should pivot to the game. Yeah, when you said speaking of intrusive earlier, I thought that was going to be your pivot for introducing our GM here. Oh, speaking of intrusive. Speaking of intrusive, there's Oh, uh, Rizzi, you can also make up lyrics for this song as it plays if you want. <laughs> Sorry, that's my guy. He's got a microphone over there. We always wonder why. No one wants to hear him talk when I was in. Wow. It happens. All right. Welcome, Ian. Hello. Um, so Ian's gonna lay out our game for us here. Oh no! Oh no! Josh, don't unmute that. That's bad. Okay. Day saved. <laughs> right on. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I got to hear you speak for a little bit, breezy, Brian, Greg. Well, thanks, Ian. Great name. So I enjoyed what you like. I enjoyed what you had to say. So. I'm glad I got to catch a little bit of it. Um, uh, and now I have a practical question for you. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> no, I never have. No, but you're open to the idea. So I'm open like to the idea, and I've already decided what kind of animal to be in the pet shop. Well, that's fucking rad. I would love to hear what it, what is it? <laughs> a turtle. A turtle. Yes, yeah. that's amazing. And what's your turtle's name? Is your no. 
Uh, Flip the switch. Let's switch. Flip the switch on it. Can you hear me better now? I can hear you much better. Oh, wait. OK, right. <laughs> I'll turn the mic on. What's your turtle's name again? Bill. Bill. Hell yeah. yeah. Does he have any special abilities being a turtle? Two special abilities. Oh, wow. Nice. OK, what are they? Uh, one, like, he can make other uh, other creatures and even humans, like, become overcome with love. Mm. Wow. That is so powerful. Okay, uh, nice. Can he make a ferret uh, overcome with love? Pardon me? Can he make a ferret overcome with love? Yeah, sure. Any any kind of animal. I don't know if this power might be overpowered. <laughs> It's uh it's it's been a ruthless ferret so far, but maybe maybe the ferret has a redemption arc. Very mm -hmm. true. Okay, what's his other ability? Uh his other ability uh can, can be really mean or it can be used for good. It's just, it's like a knife, you know. Um, uh, and, and that's turtle. the ability that that this turtle can 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 draw energy out of a person or an object. And, and 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 gain that energy and oh. actually freeze the object or the or the uh, uh, creature that they're drawing the energy from they can actually it's like a, a reverse microwave oven and oh, nice. it, you could just take this beam and just su suck energy right out of anything out of the air uh, and, and like that so it can be used to, you know to gain strength but it can also be used as a weapon unfortunately oh I'm gonna write down a uh, turtle power. For that and uh I think that's copyrighted <laughs> no i think that's original okay awesome cool well uh we're playing like a very like uh easy and streamlined version of dungeons and dragons so there's very few rules to learn um do you have the the sheets i have my sheet did you have any other sheets no oh you just want the blank ones or yeah, no yeah, problem. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm dumb. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, basically, uh, for everything that we do, we're going to run a roll 2d6 dice. And if it's below 6, it's a failure. If it's 7 to 9, it's a mixed success. And 10 plus is an amazing success. So whenever you try and do something that's like maybe challenging or difficult or requires your special abilities, we'll like roll dice and it'll be kind of like a probability kind of thing. So you might have like an awesome idea. You're like, I channel all my turtle power and like do this thing. But if you roll really low, it just like kind of falls short. Or maybe you have a really dumb idea and you're like, oh, well, I'm going to do a quadruple backflip and, you know, amaze my opponents. And you just like roll really high, then... You know, it just works. So that's kind of the gist of the game, right? Okay. I would say so. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I've got the dice here all ready to go. Ready to roll. Ready to roll. Very nice. So he is the, he's a rock tonight. and roll musician, so that's right. We're using right. half of those skills tonight. Yeah. Well he already rocked, so now he's gonna roll. <laughs> well you yeah, you can definitely provide the score for the entire adventure too if you want. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so, turtle bill. so we need to get him some stats, right? Yeah, how does that work again? So, okay, so, uh, so Breezy, each of our characters has a different balance of like talents, basically. Uh, I choose those words because they rhyme because we're doing songs. Uh, so what we, what we have them is they're basically like body, mind, and spirit. You know, it's about as like fundamentally distinct as you can get so um the way the way it works is that your character has to have some sort of balance if you want to have more strength in one area you're going to have less in another does that does that make sense yeah so economy um, yeah so i'll, I'll just, of labor yeah so <laughs> um what we have is we have those three numbers and if uh, so, let's say you want to do something physical. He will ask you um, to make the roll of the dice, but it's going to be modified by whether you're good or bad at doing physical things. So, um, the, where all of these uh, areas of ability start at is uh, at minus one, and you get to decide 
you get to, to take four four points, you know, four um, points of strength and distribute into those columns how you see fit. So as an example, um, I am at uh, my, my body is at a plus two and my um, my mind is at a minus two and my spirit is at plus one. So the math always works out so that you're kind of basically overall at one over zero. Does that make sense? Plus one? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So you, you can, you know, so my character is a little high here, a little low here. You can choose to keep it simple and be very balanced so that everything is a zero, but one thing is a one. Does that kind of, does that track? Uh yeah, I was just going to ask you that if if I could have two zeros on the one, because okay. I think uh, that's a simple way. <coughs> so, would you rather be have your slightly your slight strength to be in body, mind, or spirit for your turtle? Um, I would go for spirit. I agree, based on this turtle's abilities. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Zero and a zero and a one for spirit. Awesome. That is how it is. All right. Did we cover this whole the whole sheet now? For him? Yeah, pretty much. I got his talents, the guy's name, his uh turtleness, right, and his abilities. Yeah. Cool. So uh this is a continuation of a uh previous journey that we had. Um in the previous journey, uh the uh pet cetera in our uh, local neighborhood had shut down for the evening and all the uh, animals had to like convened into like a tribunal to essentially be uh, tasked by a frog whose name is the toad father uh, to figure out a way to break out of the pet cetera because he believes that within 24 hours they were all going to be culled from the store so there's like a impending doom upon the pet cetera the, the okay. Toad Father, is he the original Battle Frog? Uh, I think he was actually a Battle Toad. Um, mm. Yeah. It was a different it was different arm of the amphibious you know, unit. Right. Got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, you guys kind of uh, scoured throughout the store and um, uh, found some... Should we introduce your characters or do we... Yeah. Uh, we can either do it now or as the scene starts. Whatever is better for you. Uh, yeah, do it now. Why not? Okay, who's going first? Uh, Kelly, tell All us right. about your character. So I am a ferret named Skeeter. And uh, in terms of my appearance, uh, I wrote long. <laughs> yeah. And Boy, my... Exceptionally long, right? Yeah, like longer than you'd expect a ferret to be. <laughs> and... My background is that I was adopted uh, at one point and returned to the store because I suck. <laughs> that that was really that was the that was what they wrote on like the return paperwork. Like that's the only detail they gave. Like just fair, it just sucks. Um, I think we did see a glimpse of that in the first adventure. Uh, what did I do? Like I feel like I was just yeah. I you... wasn't nice to everyone. I did bite something pretty fatally right yeah you uh fatally uh murdered uh uh sneaky pete the weasel um, right who was nothing but a friend to you <laughs> well sure. except for some uh minor some microaggressions um in the meeting that sounds about right yeah i think that was it yeah cool and then nicole you are a parrot right yes um i'm a parrot my uh i'm half french half japanese um i was named after my french grandfather so my first name is pear um but i have taken my um the japanese last name akito so my name is pear akito um i um i'm like i'm i'm a bit old and grizzled i've been to too many pet stores and as you guys know uh parrots often outlive their owners so it's been a long life for me. Um, and um, my special talent is, uh, yes, I'm a little bit cynical, and my special, but my special talent is I can translate from human to animal. Um, I've been, I've known, known a lot of humans, so I 
figured out their language. And uh, if we come across a human, boy, howdy, am I going to be able to hear what they say? Yeah. Keep and talking, I guys. I'll be right back. Okay. I believe it's canon that you can read human as well. Yes, I think we. Yeah, I think we did establish that. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, because there was a moment where you uh, found a letter um, from the the shop owner, uh, kind of declaring your his love <laughs> for you and his intentions to adopt you. <laughs> you guys are. You guys are dead set on uh, escaping the the pet cetera. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did. Um, yeah. Nothing. Oh, Nothing gets into my poor hard bird heart. It's hard as bird seed, as as the parrots say. Uh, that's a strong saying in the parrot community. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, I think it's canon that you also smoke cigarettes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you I have this have... like uh, how you say it's all fucked kind of like mm -hmm. attitude. Yeah. It's yeah. I went for the most offensively stereotypical French I could possibly do. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was smart to stay clear of the Japanese, though. I wish I did that with uh, Sweepy Pete. <laughs> oh, that's right. I have the list of characters in the book. Yeah. Oh, I wrote all the Petes down. I got them. I got them right here. Just I... spent the entire two weeks fleshing out like the backstories of all of these characters. All the, all the Petes. <laughs> I hope so. My, I, I really enjoyed with that. All they're all named Petes, um, specifically because my partner and I are children, and we, you know, like. Any any sort of animal paws we refer to as their peats instead of their feet. Ah uh, yes. So yeah, this like sneaky peats was like he's got sneaky little. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay. I'm lame. Let's continue. Sorry. What what is the what is the toads or sorry the turtle's name again? Uh, Bill. Bill. Yeah. Turtle Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. So. Uh, you guys had all assembled by the Toad Father to escape the pet cetera. You assembled the, assembled the team of uh, Streaky Pete, the snail, Sneaky Pete, the weasel, who is dead now, Sweepy Pete, the chinchilla, Sleepy Pete, the bat, and Squeaky Pete, the mouse. I'm sorry that's complicated, but it's just how it turned out. Uh, yeah, so you guys kind of like uh, meandered through the store and you kind of found like an air vent and you're you uh, broke into it by using uh, uh, Skeeter's uh, super power ability to bite through almost anything. Mm -hmm. And he uh, chiseled a hole out of the air ducts. And now you guys are kind of traveling through the air ducts. Um, you managed to steal a lighter, um, which uh, only, only Skeeter can use, apparently. And uh, used it to like follow a wind tunnel through like the air vents. And you kind of like hit a dead end where there's this like fan that seems to be like peering out into the outside. And just before you're able to escape through the fan or try and attempt to get through the fan, you're confronted by a weasel um, who accuse you guys of being terrorists because you killed uh, Sneaky Pete in cold blood. And then there was a bit of a standoff between betwixt your groups at this point. I think that's where we kind of finished, right? That sounds about right. Is that the reason they were mad at us? Was because there, like, there was a weasel that died in a ferret involved biting. There was a. a I'm using the passive voice here because I need to exonerate myself. <laughs> right. There, there was an incident with a ferret and a weasel, and there may have been some sort of uh, accusation thrown at you for murdering his friend. But. I got the uh, impression that they had some history as well, Skeeter and this. And mystery what was weasel. mystery weasel? Yeah, yet that's to, understandable to, yeah. that somebody would be upset about murder. Yeah, and yeah. You know what? That's a, great way, that's a great way to start our adventure. Um, you're all standing in a standoff, and uh, Bill the turtle, who has been uh, just kind of straggling behind, like turtles are not known for their speed. But was our, Bill the Turtle in our group the whole time, or was was Bill the Turtle in this uh, group confronting us? Uh, Bill the Turtle just kind of pokes his head around the corner and says exactly what you just said. He's like, you know, that's understandable that you know, he's he's upset. And mm -hmm. uh, the mystery weasel looks at you and he's like, uh, "Bill the Turtle, late as always," <laughs> in the kind of like a slightly condescending way. But he's like. <laughs> 
Look, your wisdom is no, not welcome here, man. We are about to engage in combat. Now I should have covered this at the top, but Breezy earlier when you were when you were describing people being like uh, angry online, and you did a cool voice where you said people were talking about the vax is good, the vax is bad. That was a cool voice, and can that be Bill the Turtle's voice? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say before you commit to this, please keep in mind that keep holding a voice, a consistent voice for a character, is very difficult, as I've discovered with my French accent and parrot. <laughs> No problem. My voice. All right. I think it's just very energetic, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, he kind of uh, casts a glance at you, and he like kind of knows that you're like good at resolving situations, but he seems like intent on harming the group or the the, the murder of his comrade. Mm. Oh. And he says, "Build the turtle. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay out of this." All right. So how do you want to respond to that, uh, Bill the Turtle? Who am I to know what's good for me? I'm interested in what's good for all of the animals. We want to get out of this pet store alive. Except maybe for the weasel. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, cool. that, 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 that one may be a lost cause. This is a perfect uh, time to roll to see how effective your your charisma is. So roll two dice and tell me what the number pops up. Whoa, eleven! All right. And, uh, the weasel just like he had a really cool like he was like slouching against the fan and then like yeah nice <laughs> he was like slouching in it's the fan and, and like his is like confidence just melts and he's like Bill the turtle I was afraid you'd do this win my heart <laughs> you're always right Bill the turtle I'm sure we can come to some sort of peaceful resolution but I feel like Bill you and I both know the truth of the situation about trying to escape that these these group of travelers are not the first band of Pete's to try and escape they are a long succession of Pete's don't we all remember uh, uh, Leedy Pete, the budgie, Leedy Pete, the frog, <laughs> Creepy Pete, the bush baby, and Sleazy Pete, the other weasel. Sorry, did you say bush baby? Yeah, yes, he was a, he, yeah, he was a diversity hire. <laughs> Is a bush baby a real animal? Yes. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> this is your character. He's like, look, Pierre Quito, if you don't know what a bush baby is, I, I can't help you. <laughs> I've lived a long time and I've never heard of such a thing, but... but... Uh, and of course, who, who, who could forget all the legends of the, 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 the sheep, Sheepy Pete? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sheepy Pete. Sheepy Pete, the, the guinea pig that had the, the fur that looked like the sheep. Right, right, that's right. Yeah. Anyways, I think there's something you might want to know Nick, about it's all the... Clothing. Yeah. <laughs> right as always, Bill the Turtle. No role needed. Your charisma is good. <laughs> but, yes. There's something you need to know about all those Pete's that came before you. That the second that they broke the barrier here behind the fan, they were just essentially lambs to the slaughter. Not many lasted more than 10 minutes outside of the pet cetera. It's a, it's an intense world out there. There's machines that are, that move gravel and land and soar across the sky. And this is not such an easy place to be when you're a pet in pet cetera. Right, we got, we got someone who can soar across the sky. Isn't that, isn't that right, Parakito? Uh, yes, but I mean, as soon as we get out of here, I'm flying off on my own. I'm leaving you here. I hope you understand that this, we are not in this together. Oh, Parakito, how little you know. I like how you're holding a cigarette, by the way. It's very. <laughs> I'm trying to stay in character. <laughs> well, 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 Veracruz not going to help us. We're going to have to look at ourselves. And uh, well, I look over at Sweetie Pete. What do you think, Sweetie Pete? <laughs> He's just enjoying it and Chirito <laughs> politely in the back. 
He's well, like, <laughs> he's like, that's cool. I'll, I'll follow with you later. You know, I always love to hear the sound of your voice, sweetie Pete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, uh, talking about all these Pete's. <laughs> what about Parakeeto? Mm -hmm. She's a parrot. How come she's not repeating what we said? <laughs> oh, wow. You we know, blew it. So that's actually a really harmful stereotype, and uh, it's very offensive that you would assume that I would do such a thing. Very offensive that I would do such a thing. <laughs> and and the, the, the ferret slams his, his fist onto the, the, the side of the piping. He's like, listen up for Pete's sake. I'm trying to tell you. Pete was sent to the slaughter out there. We need to confront the real villain in all this, the Toad Father. He knows as well as the rest of the survivors, like me and Bill, that this is all a sham. There's no true way out of the pet cetera without death coming to you. Is the Toad Father with us, or did he just stay back? No, he's like uh, he's still chilling in that like uh, he had his like lounge area with the swinging overhead lamp, where he like just basically told you that you needed to escape the pet cetera. I, I look around at all the other animals and I say. Yeah, wait, did, did, did any of us question why the Toad Father didn't want to escape? He, he said it was so important to escape. Did, did, does he want to die? What did he say? And all the all the Pete's kind of like look at each other, Pete to Pete, eye to eye, and back to you. And they're like, mm -hmm. and just kind of shrug. Hmm. Oh, no. It um, seems that you were left in the dark. The Toad Father has not told all to you. Has not told told all. He has not told all. He never told all. <laughs> totally. I. <laughs> well, Wait, you know, I always towed the line with him, but. <laughs> with him just toting your responsibilities around. I, I knew something was up. That's right. I mean. Doesn't he know that if you protest with your truck, you might get towed? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone nods and looks <laughs> like Um so yeah, I go, you know, it makes sense that we should go after our leaders. As a French as a French parrot, I could have told you that revolution was the way out of this. Let's let's go figure this out. I don't know. My accent keeps switching. Please ignore. <laughs> did, did you wait who who was the who was the ringleader of the group that approached us? Uh, it's like, well, thank you for asking me. My name, <laughs> my name is Sleazy Pete. <laughs> what kind of animal was Sleazy Pete? A weasel. Okay, right. It's a different weasel. Different weasel. Okay. Uh, so I look oh, over at Sleazy Pete. One dead weasel and one live weasel? Yeah, see, we had enough weasels. We had too many weasels. We're, we got the perfect number of weasels now. It's one of every um, animal. Unfortunately, we now, we're now left with the lesser of two weasels. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I take great offense to that. <laughs> yes, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's my that's favorite. Really you really always do that. You know what I say? Uh, it's better to uh, uh, stick with the weasel you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a really thing to, rude thing to say uh, in, in, front of the, in front of the weasel. The, 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 you don't like him, Parakeeto, but I mean, I guess it, it's understandable you're, uh, to be rude. You are French. Um, I am French. <laughs> yes. I'm glad we've established this. So, okay, so, so Pete, before I get interrupted, what? Yeah, what is it? Are Are you saying I'm no longer on trial? Are we putting the system on trial? I'm, I'm telling you that maybe the murder was just collateral damage on a journey that you do not fully understand. Hmm. I can get behind that, and I slink back into the shadows before anyone questions me. <laughs> Seems like we're not going to get justice for this murder, just like as an observational aside. <laughs> It's uh, it's very, it's potentially going to happen. Like, I I I kind of reemerge from the shadows. We need we need we need justice for the the the, the institutional uh, uh, oppressions of the system, which is why we need to take down the system. And if that if 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 Sleazy Pete says that uh, entails take entails uh, entails taking out the the, the, the the Toad Father, then that's great. Are we talking about taking out this air conditioning system? <laughs> If that's what you think, Bill the Turtle, I, I've always trusted your uh, well, your charisma more than anything. I think I it's an avenue of escape 
for a road or a toad. Mm. I mean, we are kind of in the air conditioning system, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just hanging out. Well, we'll follow your lead, build a turtle. Whatever you want to do, we'll 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 follow you. You're a real, uh, you're a real god among peats. And all the peats like, I'm, not I'm sure. just peat among peats. I'm not sure. I thought that we would we'd be safer to get out of this pet store, but someone said the world's dangerous out there. Yeah, my name's Sleazy Pete, and you can trust me. <laughs> I, seems... I don't know. what it, What's everybody else think? Is it what? safe to escape, or are we safer here hoping that some kind person will take us for a pet and not bring us back to the store again? If only one of us had such an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Candidly looks at Parakeeta. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um... Breezy, last last uh, game that we played, I read a heartfelt letter from the pet shop owner in which he um, said that he would adopt me and care for me to the end of his days. Um, and then I lit it on fire because I don't trust humans. Mm -hmm. mm. But uh, I say, you know, as, as a French person, I would like to cast my vote for uh, ambushing this uh, toad father and uh, this... Uh, Viva la re revolution! Let's do this. Let's storm the Bastille. Yeah. And the pizza are like, yeah, that sounds good. Do you want to do that? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to go with the crowd. I, we, we all see what happens when I make decisions. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So you guys want to meander back to where you met the Toad Father? I so I do, but I specifically want to go through the air vents so that we can like drop in from above, like oh, into the. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, totally. Totally. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Build the Turtle, having extreme knowledge of the vents, uh, just like guides you. He's like, Yeah, I know where to go. And he like guides you to like through the series of, series of vents that like lead you to a vent that like overlooked that like hanging light fixture that you guys were hanging out with the, the Toad Father in front mm -hmm. of. And, uh, you can kind of see through this like great event, like the Toad Father talking to uh, a rat, and uh, uh, you can kind of eavesdrop in on him. And the Toad right. Father's like, "Yeah," and then I sent them all to their death, and I don't even care about it at all. <laughs> yes, I figure if I keep killing off pets, my my likelihood of being adopted will increase every time. <gasps> every single peat that I've sent to the slaughter. And then the rat's like, yeah, yeah, boss, yeah, 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 uh, fuck him, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, that was a fantastic like, rat voice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, he's like missing patches of fur, and he's just like rubbing his hands together. He's like, yeah, yeah, boss, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I press my ear to the grate to see what else the rat is gonna say. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, shit, <laughs> yeah, fuck, boss, yeah, that's so good. He's just swearing. <laughs> he's just a sailor. <laughs> we have to talk about that. Yeah, we have to. Sorry, yeah, sorry, no, 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 I spoke over you. Please, 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 uh, uh, speak unimpeded, and I back off. Wow. Bill conjures. Oh, can turtles get COVID? Who? <laughs> Probably, actually. Yeah. So, sorry, Bill. What did you say, Bill? Uh, I couldn't hear you over Skeeter. What was your suggestion? You want to talk to the rat? We've got to talk to him. We've got to let him know if if he'll be next if we're gone. Mm -hmm. Just he so you don't let him be deceived. So you're suggesting we try to turn the rat to our side. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Squeaky Pete's like, yeah, that's a great idea. We should do it. Squeaky Pete's a mouse. Yeah, all right. Yeah, let's get the rat on our side. Yeah. Uh, All in numbers. Okay, so well, I'm gonna try and can we open this vent? Uh, yes, you could try and open it, but it may may draw attention to you if you okay. open it. Um, can well, we? We need, we need a plan. We need to use the best of our abilities. What are all of the animals that are canonically present in this vent right oh, now, just so me. we know who is available? Uh, yeah, we got uh, right now uh, Squeaky Pete the mouse, uh, Sleepy Pete the bat. 
Sweepy Pete, the chinchilla, and Streaky Pete, the snail. Okay. And the three of us? And the three of you. That's it? Yeah, uh, I don't think uh, Sleazy Pete joined you. Mm. He's hanging out by the vent, being cool. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so I think what we should do is we should send... Sn oh, s Squeaky... No, no, who's the bat? What's the bat's name? Uh, Sleepy. I think so we should send Sleepy Pete to create a diversion in the other room to distract the Toad Father, and then I will swoop down and grab the rat and bring him up here. What do you guys think? I think that's great. I don't have to do any work. Perfect. Do you want me to disintegrate the vent cover first with my special power so that by freezing it? Yes. Here uh, is it. Uh, Sleepy Pete's like, yes, do that. <laughs> Wow, that sounds great. I didn't realize turtles could do that. <laughs> roll. Do I, do I have to roll a dice? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, do it. Ooh. Five. Oh. So you think that you have that power. <laughs> <laughs> but you and you like you like get up on your hind legs, and you're like Ooh. and then uh you like come to hum and vibrate at the vent and and then you uh you clench and you're like, <laughs> and you, you just fart a little bit. <laughs> and then you remember you don't have that power. <laughs> what does a turtle fart sound like for you? For enough cannon? dried insects. Hmm? <laughs> a turtle fart probably sounds uh, 10 points to anyone who can do the best turtle fart. But um, I would say like, what? whoa, who did that? That was me. That's pretty fucking good. Um, yeah, oh, we'll we'll just take that yeah, in post that's, that's and we'll true. just place it over the turtle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. Okay. Ten points for Parakeeto. Um, right. That actually gives you advantage on your roll, Parakeeto. So, <laughs> go all right, forward. cool. Uh, so, so, so the vent is not open, but it does have a turtle fart on it. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, where's Sleepy Pete? Is Sleepy Pete trying to distract the Toad Father? Uh, the, the vent has not been opened, but... Oh, but he, like, he's oh, like, oh, he's ready to go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that um, work. I, think it's your, I think it's your time to shine there, uh, Sweepy Pete the Chinchilla. Why don't you... Uh, do you have a plan? How you? How do you think we should get this vent open? Uh, uh, Sweepy Pete gestures towards a taquito. He's like... Mm, sorry. <laughs> taquito. Sorry. <laughs> Sweepy Pete, you're not being very helpful right now. Mm, Ash... I bat the I bat the taquito out of his hands. <gasps> now you fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you guys are just gonna scrap. And uh, he uh, just stomps off in rage. Okay. Stomps off. He stomps off. He's mad. Okay. I eat the uh, taquito. <laughs> can I can I try and undo the screws in the vent with my beak? Yeah, you can do that. Yes. Okay. You guys didn't get this covered. I'm gonna go look for something to eat. Okay, I got an 11 and a minus 1, so I got a 10. Yeah, that works. All right. You expertly open up the screws with your beak. Tweet, tweet, tweet. And because you rolled so good, it just, like, silently, like, whoosh, 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 and just kind of, like, dangles, and no one notices. Perfect. And uh, Sleepy right. Pete's like, all right, do you want me to do the thing? Like, scare him? I'm a bat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do your thing. Go for all it, right. Sleepy, Sleepy Pete. <laughs> And Sleepy Pete just like freaks out and just starts like flying around the room and like scattering papers everywhere and just like causing a ruckus. And the Toad Father is like, ah, whoa, hey, what the fuck? Hey, it's uh, Sleepy Pete. What? Oh, what? Sleepy Pete? And he's like kind of running around trying to gather Sleepy Pete. Or he's hopping, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, so I'm going to fly out of the vent and try and snatch up the um, rat in my talons. Yeah, do it. Oof. Um, I got a f six minus one is a five. Oh, but you got advantage. So you can roll one dice again. Okay, and then that just replaces one of the dice. I got four, um, which I think is was my highest roll last time. So oh, oh, wait, four. I guess right. So yeah, I guess four plus four would be eight minus one. So I got a seven. All right. Uh, it kind of works. Um, okay. Yeah, you like... You like, and also just because it's a good plan. But yeah, you sweep down, 
and you try and grab uh, the rat. He's like, ah, fuck, fuck you, fuck, fuck. And like, he's like kind of wriggling around. And uh, uh, I'm going to say that you uh, managed to like pull him away. You can't, you didn't get back to the vent, um, but you've like pulled him off to the side to where the toad father can't see him. And you've got, you've got a uh, one-on-one -on -one with Parakuto and the rat. And he's like, let go of me, fuck you. Okay. Um, so while me, they're all doing this, because this is a plan I clearly can't help with as somebody who doesn't fly, I want to kind of like dart down the vents after Sweepy Pete the chinchilla to see if I can go find him and maybe like just apologize. Can, can, can I make can I make a suggestion? Because you're extra long, could we just like use you because that's the good rest of the animals use you as a rope to shimmy down out of the vent? Yeah. I think so. That seems like something that would be helpful to the group, which I know you don't like to do, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be helpful by splitting up the party into more manageable chunks, which <laughs> makes it easier not helping. for the GM. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so as I'm, I'm torn on this decision um, over whether I should be selfish or help people, because usually I'd be selfish, but in my head, I remember the words of the the most uh altruistic animal i ever met sweepy pete the chinchilla <laughs> and i think of what sweepy pete would have said to me or what sweepy pete said to me all those years ago that warmed my heart <laughs> and i hear in my head hey man <laughs> just go and do it for the good of the team without the team what do you have and i I, I go over and I do exactly that. I, what am I doing? Am I like dangling myself from the vent and just let people hang on me? Yeah, or I think I mean, it, it, theoretically, because you are made of like you know muscle and flesh and bone, you probably could like wrap yourself around people and lower them down. I don't know how long you are. You decide. I, I was just gonna say like four inches longer than a normal ferret, which makes me still like maybe a foot and a half long, tip to tail. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like we're on like a twenty foot ceiling. Uh, no, I'm gonna say because it's your superpower, you're you're like my superpower is biting. I thought it was your extra long. No, that's my what do I look like? Oh, right. No, uh, I, I don't know. I, I really like the idea. It works. <laughs> like, okay. it, you're in like you're in like a you're like behind, or maybe there's a cage that's only a few feet below the ceiling. Yeah, you're like in behind um uh like the walls of the pet cetera. So it's like I don't know. It's like indescript. Who knows really what that looks like? So I'm gonna say that the the the, the vent to the floor area is one ferret long, one extra long ferret long. Right. Okay. I stretch out on Michael Jordan in Space Jam. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and all, all the Pete's intuitively know what to do, and they start to like shimmy down this extra long ferret's body. And uh, while they're shimmying down, uh, the the rat like looks at you, and he like gives you a nasty look. He's like. Does like an anime thing. He's like, nah. He's like, what's your deal? Why are you grabbing me? What? What do you want? So I know. Start swearing. That, <laughs> I know that I like as a cynical old French parrot. I'm not going to be able to convince this rat to join the good of the group because I haven't even convinced myself that. Um, so I turn to the person that I know is best suited to change the hearts and minds of other animals, and I say, Bill. Bill, I need your help here. I think I think you should take this one. Of course, Bear. You're right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that voice I'm treating you. Use my special power to make him love everyone and everything. Yeah. yeah. Roll the dice. Ooh, three. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Um, the power yeah, of the love is not with the force. Yeah, the rat somehow like the sight of three plus one, three plus one, right? Okay, <laughs> so somehow, uh, Perkito, you just like grab the rat in your claw and you like gesture towards the turtle and like, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> like, Bill, do your thing. And then the rat just like squints at Bill and he's just like, I I don't know why, but I just hate more now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> he starts like clawing at you. He's like, "Let me go! I kill you!" So, in watching Bill's fantastic attempt to try and get this rat to love, I see 
I finally start to understand what true altruism and true love for um, each other is. Um, can I like combine my, like, can I like turn my uh, realization of altruism into like a, some sort of like booster for, for yeah. Bill the Turtles move here? I'm trying to try and like uh, channel the zeitgeist of what it is to be French. And like intuitively, like Squeaky Pete like walks up outside you and like grabs your claw. He's like, "We could do it together." And like <laughs> Squeaky Pete is like crawling up on top of your head and then like gesturing with his little eye, eye things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's all the Pete's actually. Yeah, Sleepy Pete's distracting uh, the the Toad Father, mm -hmm. and they're like, "We could do it together with friendship." Come on, Skeeter. <laughs> And we all look at Skeeter. Skeeter, we cannot do this without you. Please. Oh, I'm, 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 am I still hanging like from the vent or like is everyone everyone climb down me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can't sleep. I the feel ferret... like I was still hanging on because I was just gonna be the escape ladder. Yeah, so. ferrets take no fall damage. So okay, okay, okay. I'm coming down. What do you want me to do? And then I drop down. He's like, we, we need to we need to channel the zeitgeist of what it is to be French and <laughs> teach this rat how to love. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But put me the rat. Where's the rat? Right here. And he's like, <laughs> and he's like all like missing patches of fur. And just, like, uh, a snot bubble kind of like pops. <laughs> like, uh, his little rat nose. And I um, I walk up to the rat and I go, okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> uh, Monsieur le rat, uh, pourquoi tu es si fâché? Il faut que tu aimes tout le monde avec nous, tes amis. And uh, without any prompting whatsoever, all the Pete's join in like almost like a chant and they say the exact same thing in French. And uh, roll, roll. Okay, let me, let me, let me get my, uh, my mic in position. Uh, what am I rolling? Uh, I think this is a spirit roll. Okay, so that was a nine plus one, which is a 10. Nice. Yay. Okay, and uh, Skeeter, somehow... Uh, like has conquered his own ferrety nature and uh, has united all the peats and Parakeeto and Bill the Turtle to channel Bill the Turtle's ability to make uh, creatures love love everything. And the rat just like it's almost like a Disney like like sparkles just like -da -wing, like sparkle across his body is like all the patches of fur gain new fur. Um, he used to be like brown and scuzzy and now he's like blonde. <laughs> he has like a really long like tail that's like beautiful so i've and... conquered my ferrety nature yes so i've gone i've made a huge transformation from being like kind of creepy untrustworthy rude and selfish and kind of smelly uh and now i've become french um which is a very different whether, thing. whether it's temporary or permanent is okay you know up for debate but wow, essentially you turned, you turned uh, the rat beautiful and he is like and he's just like he just like a ah oh, oh, I I can't believe I used to swear so much. That's so lame. I could use more creative words to communicate my thoughts and feelings. I'm sorry, guys. You, you know what, Mister Rat? Now, 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 now that you're gonna be censoring yourself and your own curse words, we can we can call you Bleepy Pete. <laughs> so you can still swear, but now somehow magically, <laughs> if, if any one word I come across is later, you would you would just be bleeped. I don't. I don't even have the desire to swear anymore. I just want to help help the community. I think I'm going to start a market garden right here in the floorboards, mm -hmm. or I can help you guys. I don't know. What do you want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah. So we're gonna say. I'm gonna look at him and go. We need you to tell us what the Toad Fossil is planning and how to undermine him. Oh, he's doing. He's planning on doing terrible, terrible things to everyone. And you know what? I I feel bad for yes manning him on all these things, and I I want to let you guys know I've changed. And I'm 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 here, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. Listen, Bleepy I'm Pete, I'm a nice rat now. If you if you help us, I will be forgiven. And at the end of all this, I'll, I'll work in your market garden. And he like nuzzles up for a hug. And he's like, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. Oh, we. Yeah, you and me. All right. <laughs> And uh, that's right. <laughs> and uh, Rat's like, "Oh yeah, well he's he's been trying to kill off all the pets in the 
pets out in hopes that he'll get adopted because he knows he's 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 a mean he's a mean toad he's a mean toad and he needs to change but he won't and he's just sending all the peats in the store to be like slaughtered in the outside world and uh it's really it's really not a nice thing that he's doing so kill another pet in the pet cetera who would, who would do such a thing i can't imagine <laughs> horrible not you you want to work in a market garden oh, that's right <laughs> Um, so I look over at Bill and I go, Bill, what, what do you think? How do you guys think we should stop him? Or like, I guess I'm going to, this is a question to the group, not specifically to Bill, but Bill, you have some input. This would be helpful. What, uh, what, how do you think we should stop this toad father fellow? Oh, baby, Guys, baby. Bill's Bill's lost in maybe, thought. That maybe, means he's gonna come up with something good. Maybe we'd learn. <laughs> All I can think of is something good or something bad. <laughs> oh, oh. What do you think we should do? Go for the good solution or the bad solution? Try for the good or try for the bad? Ooh. We could freeze him and 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 until he's brittle and break him into a million pieces. <laughs> oh wow. Or with my special freezing power, or we can try really... again to warm his heart and make him love us all. Well, my old self would have would have said, "Let's freeze him and break him." But uh, I don't know what to believe anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to uh, I, I'm gonna defer to the Parakeeto because I, I keep deferring to Bill. And my 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 old rat self says, "Murder with <coughs> love." What do we do, Parakeeto? Oh boy. Um. Beats like, what do we do? We trust you, Barakito. <laughs> this is my problem when I played Fable as a kid, is I never went for the evil thing. I I think you know the love the love thing worked really well for the rat, and I think we should I think we should try this this one more time. And if you know what, if that fails, we can always kill him afterwards. I am I am I'm good, good either point. way. Very <laughs> good point. And as you say that, like this, like uh, the the light from the overhead. In, uh, swinging lamp is, seems to be like blotted out for a bit as uh, the toad father like looms above the group and uh, you just see a bat wing kind of like sticking out of his mouth. Oh and, no! Uh, and he's like, <laughs> is that so? You think it's so easy to make a toad love everything or to slay a toad such as I? And he like and he like takes a big breath in and inflates his like toad body and he's like bo, bo, bo. he does like a boss laugh like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I scream back, and I want to take a, try and take a very bold action here. W what I want to do, uh, because my power is biting, but yeah. I won't use my powers for love now, is I want to run up to the Toad Father and bite him on his lower lip, but <laughs> in a sensual way. As I'm, as I like make out with him, like I just go <laughs> and I just, just try to make out with the toad father. Yeah, I want to go make out with the toad father, but like use my all my years of biting experience to know how to bite his lower lip in the most enticing way. But now for love, yes. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna bite it off. It's 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 gonna be sensual. All right, I'm that's gonna, what I that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, I'm gonna say if you roll a uh, seven plus, mm -hmm. it is for love, but if it's below, it's for evil. <laughs> and what am I rolling? Uh, two Ds. Uh, I think ooh, I don't know. Mm, this is a uh, say. I'm gonna say spirit. Because you're just trying to like decide who you are right now. Okay. So I get a plus one. All right. Come on, come on. Um, for the viewers at home, I got a. Can you see it? There we go. Hey, that's, that's the guys are there. Which is actually expensive and frowned upon term in this pet shop but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you like uh you like he's like Bleh! he's like distracted his eyes are like poking on different directions he's like blah, 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 blah. and you like bear it around his body and like bite his lower lip and he's like Bleh! and you just like <laughs> there's a moment of like eye contact where you just like bite down hard and just like Bleh! and he just like blood starts to like squirt out of his lower lip he's like and he like he like thrashes you to the side as he like looms towards the group and he's like so it's gonna be like that then is it and he's like goes a bit scottish and he's like <laughs> leaning over you and he's like seems to be like 
about to attack the the group. Am I still lashed onto his face, or did I? Uh, or did I was like, no, he, he threw you aside as he's like now just like you've angered him in such a way where he's about to attack oh, attack no. the group. Uh, uh, deeply ashamed, I I look for something to hide under. It is achieved. Um, he's like, you'll never stop me in my my ongoing attempts to slay every peat in the pet store. Jesus. <laughs> so I go. Well, I I think that kind of cancels out the love thing. I think we should just try and freeze and shatter him at this point. What do you guys think? I'm. <coughs> I can't answer. I'm hiding. I'm gone. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, be like, yeah, I don't know. Seems pretty mad. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Bill, are you able to use your powers to stop stop this evil toad? I certainly hope so. Okay, I'm gonna try now. He's already took an upper roll. He, he's, he's ready. Oh! Was that a good or a bad? <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah! Nine plus one, ten. Yeah, so like the the toad follower is like, oh, I'm evil and irredeemable in every single way, so don't feel bad about killing me. And then like, uh, Bill the turtle does the same, like, Ooh, and it's like kind of like, Ooh. and uh, Squeaky Pete's like, oh no, not this again. But then like, Ooh, and then, like a like a like a ray of frost just like shoots from his turtle hands. And like spirals around the toad father, he says like, Bleh! and kind of like freezes in a like a <laughs> upright frog position. And you can imagine what that looks like. And he just like turns solid into ice, Chwing! <laughs> just like that. <laughs> oh, okay. Is, wait, what, what am I? What am I seeing here? Is that what? That's the ice beam. Yeah, that's oh, the ice okay. beam. And uh, the toad father is frozen solid into a solid block of ice. But you can still see his eyes, like, okay. <laughs> darting around and looking. I, looking I have around. an idea. Um, so I would like to pick, because I am looking for something that's heavy and hard that I can drop onto the toad to shatter him. So I would like to try and pick up Bill the turtle and drop him onto the toad father to shatter him. Bill, do you consent? Certainly. This is a wonderful plan. I'm okay. a certainly. This is a wonderful plan. Okay. <laughs> All right, Bill. Hold on tight. Oh boy. Uh, I got a three. Do you have more dice, Kelly? Oh yeah, there's a whole jar there. Oh, okay, I just steal mine. So yeah, you like you like try and grab Bill, and you just like you just kind of like bumble and trip and fall. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. But then Squeaky Pete's like, I've had enough, and he like picks up Bill. Even though it's <laughs> inside, he's like, yeah! He's like, he eats Bill in a perfect, like, football spiral, <laughs> flies through the air, and shatters uh, the Toad Father right in the middle. Is like, the Toad Father shambles into like a million pieces onto the floor. And Squeaky Pete's just like, <laughs> but he's really in there. And I, uh, I, I noticed that. Um, I do. I do see from my hiding place that the uh, the Toad Father has exploded into a million pieces, and I poke my head out from my hiding spot and I say, "Wow, that's uh, that's quite the break." <laughs> and everyone looks at the camera, <laughs> just kind of smiles. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you shattered the Toad Father into a billion pieces. Is this a good place to? Because I, I just got the ten minute mark. For... Is it a good place to break? I don't know. I don't, I don't... The only way to know for sure if it's a good act is, is, uh, is whether the dramatic swell of music starts playing. <laughs> dead, toad father dead. Toad father dead. <laughs> All right, we nailed it. We actually accomplished something. That's amazing. I don't think I've ever gotten that much done in one play session before. No, and that wasn't even like a full. We started, yeah, that was like forty-five minutes. Usually, we have an hour, and we get nothing done. Oh, right on. Sorry, yeah. I just saw someone's like ten-minute thing, like ten minutes ago. It's just like, oh shit. Someone couldn't say who. Mm -hmm. 
Well, now that we've fleshed out the basis of our song, uh, I'm wondering if we should write a song about um, the like a, 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 a beautiful folk song celebrating the the defeat of the evil Toad Father. Yeah, I'm into it. Um, Bill the Turtle, would you bless us with such a song? And uh, for those of you uh, in the audience who aren't able to see the private chat, um, you'll be glad to know that Nicole isn't gone forever. She's just left to take a pee because she drank too much tea. So <laughs> she didn't have time to give that message out to all of you, but I'm passing it on for her. Who's the guy that, that just died, the bad guy? The Toad Father. Toad Father, yeah. Okay, well, I'll... Well, I'll try to help you with this song, uh, except everyone has apparently abandoned us, so. You kind of set the tone for like what the song sounds like and what the like meter is. I think we can try to help you with some verses. I would definitely just solo until those other two come back. Hope father's gone. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Don't father's gone now. Are you there, oh, you I guys? Was, I was just backing you. Oh, okay. Don't father's gone. We're gonna be free, we're gonna be happy. Now we're safe. Oh, the fall is gone. Okay, I'll, I'll do a verse. I, you ready? Yeah, yeah. You, you need to like blink or something for when I'm supposed to start because I have no sense of music. So I need like a visual cue of when to start the verse. Oh, just now. Uh, Toad Father's gone. Toad Father's gone, and that's pretty sweet. Toad Father's gone. Toad Father's gone, and so is Sweepy Pete. The Toad Father's gone, and the awful weasel, too. I wonder what's gonna happen. You better tune in next week. That's right, you. Nicole, do a verse. Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah! That was wonderful. I don't think I could top that one. That was, that was good. You're, you're going to need to give me some music lessons uh, so we can refine this in the future. Mm -hmm. That'll be on the next album that we put out. Be the Toad Father. Yeah. Uh, well, should we, should we cut a whole album? We have 10 minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> What? I thought we had 10 minutes left. Well, that was 10, 10 minutes, minutes left so that we wrap up early enough to do a song. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. I don't gotcha. know. I think I think we should have a, a Parakito solo track. Oh, boy. A song sung from the perspective of Parakito. <laughs> yeah, entirely in a French accent. That seems like it probably yeah. can't go poorly. <clears throat> do it. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'll do it for all Probably from the perspective there. of Sweetie Pete the Chinchilla. No. <laughs> mm. Well, mm. A song entirely from the perspective of one of the GM played characters. Uh, squeaky feet. <laughs> you choose. Can we do a squeaky feet, Merrick. Can we do a squeaky feet song? Sure. 
Okay. <laughs> Give us a beat. <laughs> Okay. This is a song, a squeaky feet. <laughs> squeaky feet, the mouse. No, oh, wow. I'm covered in louse. Travel through the vans. We found the toad father and his evil, evil deeds. Uh, we, uh, da, 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 we're gonna get the toad father. Even yeah. if we bleed, I picked up a turtle. <laughs> I threw it at the bad man. And he exploded in pieces by my head. It was pretty rad, man. Here it is. Okay, that's. Squeaky Pete's singing voice. So. That was I was, yeah, I, I was not expecting, I was expecting the full Squeaky Pete voice, but I appreciated that he had like a down home, like country, like very hearty accent. That was good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the only thing left is for our producer Josh to just come and sing a song a cappella <laughs> or a rap, maybe a rap. That would be good. Yeah, rap appella. Mm -hmm. Nope, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I have to say, Breezy, I appreciate how uh, producers stay behind the curtain. Producers be stay hidden. be hidden the curtain <laughs> uh, because be they be hidden by the be curtain. hidden to us. I appreciate you being so willing to uh, freestyle some songs with us. That's wonderful. I, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. We're terrible. So oh, You're welcome. It's, it's totally fun doing this to you guys. A very, you know, like, a unique experience for me. Well, I'm glad. Did you um, have anything that you wanted to plug or um, like talk about or anything that you wanted to, I guess, yeah, anything you wanted to promote before we wrap up here? Uh, well, I guess the, the Digital Public Library proposal is what I'd like to promote. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can read about it uh, at noads.ca. It's N O hyphen A D S dot C A. Okay, we should be able to put that up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, no ads. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's wonderful. And my contact is there if anybody wants to talk about it. And uh, so, uh, that, but that's mainly what I'd like to promote. But I think mm -hmm. it's time that we that we we're forty years into the digital. Uh, age it's time that we we had a public utility mm -hmm. yeah absolutely oh, cool uh if i can also give a plug for you breezy uh your website is briangreg.com that's with two g's at the end um which is it's a good uh, url to know because it's actually quite hard to find you by searching yeah, it's interesting, eh, the way the internet works right now. The search engine yeah. don't actually search the internet, they search Google servers. Yeah, and if you would be so kind as to uh, settle an ongoing debate since our election episode, on your website there's a photo of you standing uh, with a bus, um, which has been cleverly edited to say breezing, Breezy for All on it. Do you, do you remember the picture? Yeah. Are you standing in front of that bus, or were you were you photoshopped into the bus picture no well, that's a picture of uh, me and uh, my my girlfriend patsy's granddaughter who lives with us we're standing yeah. uh standing uh, on the on the sidewalk as the bus is coming by we're, we're waving at the bus driver and uh, patsy took the snapshot and i photoshopped the uh the sign into the uh, 
uh, to, uh, originally it said breezy for mayor, but now I just changed it to say breezy for everyone. Oh, clever. So you were on the sidewalk. Yeah, we were right there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a real shot. Oh, cool. Okay, I stared far too deeply into the pixel void then. I became convinced that uh, I was going crazy. Uh, <laughs> but I do like oh. having free transit after we get uh, uh, take care of the homelessness homelessness uh, problem in our city. I think that that we should have free transit. Mm -hmm. I think the gondola should be part of the public uh, transportation free transportation system. It shouldn't be a, a private uh, foreign company coming in to use part of our river valley to profit. And, you know, I think, uh, I, yeah, I think I agree. I think, uh, I think you're probably, you're the third person that we've had on here and the third politician we've had on here that has advocated for free transit. I think Giselle, um, general and, uh, oh God, Haroon. Hello. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Also, uh, we're both advocating it. So yeah. So far, 100% of politicians that I've talked to have advocated for free transit. So let's, let's make it, it must happen. Be, it must mean all politicians are into it. Yeah, absolutely. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> let's make a graph. That'd be convincing. Yeah, let's extrapolate. That's yeah. how you do stats. Mm -hmm. uh, Breezy, is there anything, like, um, as far as music, like, do you have music for sale? Is there a way people can support you in that way or find your music specifically? Or is it more just like a performance thing? Uh, well, I, I've got... Like, I really don't care about making money anymore. Mm. Uh, like, I'm but even if people just want to find some, like, but, but if you want to find my music, like on, on BrianGreg.com, uh, there's uh, uh, I have a page there with my most recent album, all the songs are there, you can listen to them. So, uh, uh, uh I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm just. Uh, I I gave away almost all my extra CDs that I had left over that I hadn't sold. Uh, like when I, when I was running for mayor, whenever I uh, meet somebody and talk to them, if if I like them, I give them a CD. So I I gave away about fifteen hundred CDs. I guess I gave away more than I got votes. <laughs> <laughs> you liked fifteen hundred people enough to give them a CD. That's impressive. Yeah. Nice. Well, before we start turning cameras off, is there anyone else in the room who has something to promote? Me? Yeah, I mean, you can you can promote your thing. You came and contributed. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess I guess when I'm not doing pet es escapes, I'm training people physically. Mm -hmm. So you could uh, check out our personal training website, uh, spiralingupwardfitness.com. But yeah, minor plug, minor plug. <laughs> Well, you know what? A plug is a plug. Everyone deserves one. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, um, about uh, about you? Uh, the rest of you, like, what are you going to promote this show? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Watch our show. Um, no, I mean, I guess in general, I always promote being informed and making sure that your information is correct. Um, so, can I can I promote like? Do that fact checking. <laughs> Is that a thing? Anyways, right. I, I promote peace and love and um, free healthcare. <laughs> well, that's a fantastic plug. Um, I, I give all of my plugs to Nicole. I just I believe the audience should uh, check out whatever she's into. Um, but we are we are at our two hour mark, so I think we should uh, end uh, with this message from our friend uh, Sweepy Pete the Chinchilla. Sweepy Pete, what would you like the audience to come away with? Uh, be.